on the switch as an example we can type the command show op and you can see on edge 3 it has an op entry for 101, 249 and 254. The reason 249 is displayed in the output is because that's my PC's IP address and I'm telnetting directly to the switch. 254 is a Cisco router and 101 is edge 1. Notice there's no entry in the op cache for the 3500 but if we ping 10.0.0.102 and look at the op cache again you can see that the 3500's IP address has been added to the op cache so what happens behind the scenes is the switch or router sends an op request asking the other device for its MAC address and an op reply is received. Once that op reply is received the op cache of the local device is populated. So we've successfully configured our devices with IP addresses and host names. Let's look at some show commands. So on the 5406 or the router, if I type the command show IP, it shows me that this device has routing disabled, which is the default. We've configured the default VLAN, which is VLAN 1, manually with an IP address of 10.0.0.100 and a subnet mask of slash 24. If we type the command show VLANs, notice there's only one VLAN configured on this device. It supports up to 256 VLANs. We're using port-based VLANs. In other words, individual ports are put into specific VLANs. If we look at another switch, let's say edge 3 and type show VLAN, you can see VLAN 1 is configured. This device, however, only supports 8 VLANs. If we type show IP, you can see IP routing is disabled and you can see the IP address configured on this device is 10.0.0.103 and it's been manually configured. So let me just change the windows around and bring the other devices into the picture. So on edge 2, which is the 3500, show IP shows me the IP address, shows me that writing is also disabled, show VLAN shows me similar kind of information and lastly on edge 1 you can see once again the IP address and show VLANs shows me that only 8 VLANs are supported. So the number of VLANs supported is device dependent. Once again with all our devices configured on the right if we do show LLDP info remote devices we can see the devices connected to it which is edge 1 and edge 2 so on edge 2 we can do something similar show LLDP info remote devices and you can see on edge 2 which is the 3500 it has a connection to the router as well as edge 3 so the output of the LLDP command is changed now to show the system name of the device that we configured we can also type show interface brief to see a list of interfaces. So here we see the status encounters of the interfaces. On the 3500 we only have two interfaces that are up, port 1 and port 2, which is correct as per our diagram. Port 1 is connecting this switch to the 5406 and port 2 connects this switch to edge 3. You can see other information here such as the speed, so the link between the 3500 and the 5406 is 1 gig full duplex and the speed between the 3500 and the 2600 H3 is 100 full duplex. MDIX is available and this is quite nice to see. So on the 3500 it's set to MDIX show interface brief on the 5406 notice on port A3 the interface connecting the 5406 to the 3500 or rather to edge 2 is set to MDI but on this side it's MDIX what's great about MDI is the devices automatically negotiate whether they're MDI or MDIX so this side is MDIX and this side is MDI in the old days, in networking, you used to have to remember whether to use a crossover cable or a straight-through cable. 
On switches, you would have to use crossover cables. Between switches and routers, you would use straight through cables. These days, it doesn't matter. The switches automatically work out if they need to be MDI or MDIX. So crossover, straight through, it doesn't matter. You can use either type of cable between the switches and they'll automatically configure themselves correctly to get that link working. We could also type the command show interface which gives me a list of interfaces and you can see here how many bytes and frames have been sent and received. So do that again you'll notice these are incrementing. Really nice command to see. Same can be seen here show interface rather than interface brief and you can see the traffic going through the interfaces. So on the router A1, 2 and 3 are connected and that's what you can see here. Show interface you can see A1, 2 and 3 have traffic going through those interfaces and the bytes and frames are incrementing all the time. So traffic is flowing through those three interfaces. We could also do the command show interface and let's look at A1. And a lot more information is available here. So you can see the MAC address, you can see bytes received and bytes transmitted, unicast traffic, broadcast or multicast traffic, a lot of other information is available here. You can see as an example the utilization, receive and transmit, at the moment it's very low because the only traffic on this network is essentially me telnetting to the devices. On an interface on the switch, I could go for instance to interface A2. Notice we're working on interface A2 now and there are a few commands available here like enable to enable the interface or disable to disable the interface. We could also change the speed and duplex. So notice speed duplex and you could set this manually rather than having the switch automatically negotiate the speed and duplex. If you've been in networking for any length of time you'll know that speed and duplex can cause a lot of problems and in many cases it makes sense to manually set the speed and duplex rather than letting the devices automatically negotiate speed and duplex. You can also change as I've discussed the MDIX mode. So are you going to set it to MDI or MDIX or are you going to allow it to automatically detect the type of cable? So as you can see here MDI is used for connecting a PC with a crossover cable. MDIX is used for connecting a PC with a straight through cable. Auto makes sense in this example so we'll just leave it as such. You can also change the name of the interface. So specify a different name for this interface if you like. Another command you can use for instance is show history to look at the commands that you've typed on the device. So as you can see the last command I typed was interface A2. You can use the up arrow key to scroll up through the list of commands or the down arrow key to scroll down the list. Control P is the same as up arrow and now Control N is the same as down arrow. You could also do this command, repeat, and specify the command that you want to repeat. Let's say number 7. And notice it will just keep typing this command until you stop it. So you just press any key to stop that command from repeating. So once again, show history. I could say repeat command 7 and now let's set the count to three times. So that will repeat that command three times. This can be very nice. So as an example we could say ping 10.0.0.103 show history repeat one let's set the delay to let's say two seconds and repeat it five times. And there you go. Very useful. 
I'll just break that. You can also use a menu on the E-series switches if you prefer. A lot of people new to networking or new to the CLI would prefer a menu. But as you get more comfortable with the CLI, you'll notice it's a lot more powerful in most situations. But let's have a look at the menu. So just type menu. And notice there are a few options available here. Like for instance, number six allows you to reboot the switch. Five takes you to the CLI. Three allows you to set console passwords and so forth. But let's have a look at one and number five, which is very nice. And notice in real time, you'll be able to see the counters on interfaces. So in real time, you'll be able to see how these increment. Now they're incrementing quite slowly here because there's not much traffic on our network. But you'll be able to see information available through this interface. As an example, I'll start a ping to one of the switches. So ping 10.0.0.103. That's sending traffic through our switch now, and hopefully we'll see the counters incrementing. And you can see that. Let's change some of the options. So if we type ping, question mark, let's change the size to a large size and repeat that again. And hopefully now the counters through port A1 and A2 will increment quite a bit more as traffic flows through the switch. And you can see those counters incrementing. We could change this to a bigger packet. And notice they're incrementing more than they were previously. So quite nice to see real-time traffic going through the switch. I could, for instance, look at details of a specific interface. So here you can see the bytes received and transmitted. We could go back. We could go back again and look at other information. So going back to the main menu, we could look at number two, switch configuration. Let's go to number seven, VLAN menu and we can look at VLAN port assignments and this is very nice because you can see which ports are assigned to which VLANs at the moment you can see ports A1 to A24 are untagged in the default VLAN in other words VLAN 1 this gives you a nice overview of which interfaces belong to which VLANs so just going back again From the main menu, you go switch configuration, number seven, VLAN menu, and then number three, VLAN port assignment. Very nice option available here. So let's go back to the CLI. And there you go. That's an example of using the menu. Very nice, but personally, I prefer the CLI. And for this course, you need to learn the CLI.